I would like to start with a poem that President Monson gave in a talk. It tells about two young men that took divergent paths and the reason why. So listen for the reason why. Here's the poem. He stood at the crossroads all alone, the sunlight in his face. He had no thought for the world unknown. He was set for the manly race. But the road stretched east and the road stretched west, and the lad knew not which road was best. So he chose the road that would lead him down, and he lost the race and the victor's crown. He was caught at last in an angry snare because no one stood at the crossroads there to show him the better road. Another day at the selfsame place, a boy with high hopes stood. He too was set for the manly race, who too was seeking the things which are good. But one stood there who the roads did know, and that one showed him which way to go. So he turned from the road that would lead him down, and he won the race and the victor's crown. He walks today the highway fair because one stood at the crossroads there to show him the better way. Now, how do we stand at the crossroads? Our youth are at the crossroads. How do we stand there for them? Certainly, teaching them the gospel, family home evening, family prayer, family scripture study, all of the things, activity in the church and youth and all the organizations, great things are there. But how do we stand at the crossroads when they are the crossroads all alone, but we need to have been there before that in order to give them all they need to make the decisions to choose the right, choose the right crossroad. So here's a thought regarding that. We have in our homes many things which teach values. Take a look at this and see what it is that matters greatly. Let us recall the story of a widow in the British Isles many years ago. To visitors she lamented that her three sons were not taking care of her. She was destitute, and she may have felt that she failed them. The boys had all gone off to sea in the Navy and the Merchant Marines. She'd become alone and penniless. Then a visitor saw a large painting hanging over her mantle. It was a majestic sailing ship at sea. The painting had been there as the boys grew up in their home. Of course they went off to sea, because they were raised with this image prominently in their home. The things we hang on the walls of our homes have impact on our children and grandchildren. Paintings or other images on our walls show our values. Children see them and learn from them that those things should be valued. What else would a child conclude? A child thinks, my parents or my grandparents think these things are important. So what you display on your walls will end up in their hearts. They will pursue those things. Right here in front of me is a, a limited edition a lithograph of one of Arnold Freeberg's Book of Mormon paintings. Of Lehi, the morning he woke up and looked outside his tent door and saw the Leahona. Look how fascinating it is how he's taken the family of Ishmael and the family of Lehi and they're all gathered around as Father Lehi is examining this ball. You can see the different characters, who's who. It's clear that Nephi is the one next to his father by the way he shows attentive interest in the Leahona. Where Laman or Lemuel, they see it, they can't deny it, it's there, but they don't look quite as happy about it as some of the others in the curiosity. And how Arnold Freeberg was able to take that account written in the Book of Mormon and illustrate it in a way that all of us of all ages, we can enjoy it and we gain something from it. This is Lehi and his people arrived to the Promised Land. What really speaks me in this image is the faces of the people on the boat. Um, you can just tell, I mean, they're weeping, they look exhausted, they're, they just are so excited to arrive. The Liahona here, it just pops out. It's just a prominent part of the image as it should be, as the story tells it. It's guiding them to the promised land, which is very cool. You can tell he's holding on the side of the boat and getting direction where to go. And the way Arnold painted 
all of the characters in this painting. He has the emotion that's on their faces, people excited to be at the promised land, up on the boat pointing at it. I can't even imagine the feeling of relief and the feeling of thankfulness um, that just brought them to tears um, that this Liahona guided them to the promised land. I always have admired the paintings of Arnold Freenberg's where it was in the Book of Mormon, and it encouraged me to go and do artwork. They were just so wonderful. He just told the story so well, and I, you could spend a long, long, long time looking at a painting like this. All the little details, I, I don't know for sure how he, how he did it. We, I, just, I just don't know how he would depict all these things. Where do you, where do you, how do you find, come, to, come with, a, with the idea of a jaguar? And, and like, when you look at that, every single thing is very, very accurate. That's the, that is the coat of a jaguar. It's not just some cat there. It, it's an exact you know, look of something. But anyway, he, tells, he told the story almost better than anyone I can almost think of. Just a great, great artist. I would urge you to take a look at the website titled bookofmormonclassics.com. Marvelous paintings that you can put into your homes and that you could frame and put on your walls, all 12 of them if you would like, but at least one or two and then rotate them from time to time perhaps. Um, these are the Book of Mormon classic paintings by Arnold Freeberg. Arnold Freeberg was born in 1913. He died in 2010, 97 years old. In the year 2000, he oversaw the lithograph printing of a limited edition of the Book of Mormon paintings. These are the same Book of Mormon paintings that the originals are in the Church Conference Center. And if you were to go into the Book of Mormon gallery on the second floor, north end of the LDS Conference Center, you would see the Book of Mormon gallery, and it consists of these 12 paintings by Arnold Freeberg. They were painted beginning in 1951 on commission from the general president of the primary, and Arnold Freeberg proceeded to paint them, and they were published in the Children's Friend magazine. They've also been published in the Book of Mormon and they are available for you to have on your walls. Uh, these are the things that will help your children choose the right crossroads instead of the wrong crossroad. And so these are the things that are valuable to you. Yes, they will increase in value because they are signed limited edition prints, and they have a history of increasing in value, but also they will increase in value in the hearts, writing the scriptures in the hearts of the children and grandchildren. You can have many conversations and many discussions for which these paintings are the catalyst to discuss what is happening here and why, what it means, what it means to all of us, what about the decisions that we make in life. So go to bookofmormonclassics.com and look at what is offered there. They are at the normal rate for what limited edition signed lithographs go. And if a person wanted to uh, do a one-year payment plan, there's no interest charged by them. So I think it's a marvelous way to have the scriptures written in our hearts, to have our children receive guidance to pick the right direction in the crossroads of life. Seeing the paintings of Book of Mormon scenes opens teaching moments with our children and grandchildren. For example, what is happening here in the Book of Mormon? And what is the message with Abinadi standing before King Noah? This is a profound scene. King Noah is the most wealthy and powerful man in the room, or is he? He looks defensive, offended. Why are the soldiers blown away, fallen to the floor? Why is this sword broken, the pet jaguars snarling, these men skeptical, defiant? However, one of them seems to take seriously the words of Abinadi. Abinadi is a weak man in chains, talking. But he boldly calls King Noah to repentance. He gives powerful, prophetic instruction on what the atonement means to us. 
he sets forth the core doctrines of the gospel of Jesus Christ, important truths that apply to each of us right here, right now. This is a profound teaching moment for parents with their children and grandchildren, and it connects with the sections we are studying in the Doctrine and Covenants in the Come Follow Me curriculum.